Hello folks, this week I finally got around to implementing Parallax, which is something that I've been putting off for quite a long time. Parallax is notoriously difficult, so I was kind of dreading doing the work, but it turned out to not be too bad. In case you're not familiar, Parallax is just an illusionary concept where things far off in the distance move slower than things that are closer to you. It's sort of like when you're riding in a car, the things that are far off in the distance, like the horizon line, looks like it's not even moving at all, but the bushes at the side of the road really zoom past your window. If you're still not really sure what I mean, then the best way would be for me to kind of just demonstrate what I did. And before I talk about that specifically, I want to go through all of the options that game developers have, well, at least 2D game developers have, when implementing backgrounds for their games. The first option is a flat background, where the background moves one-to-one -one with the foreground. Here, you'll see that when I move, the background moves exactly at the same pace as my character moves, so there's no really any disconnect there at all. This is exactly how like NES games like Super Mario Bros or Ninja Gaiden or Castlevania would look. Now the flat background is not ideal because it really is a flat environment. There's no depth whatsoever. There's no disconnect between the background and the foreground. So what I'm showing you here is a fixed background where the background just stays motionless in place while the rest of the foreground moves as the player moves. And up until this week, this is how my game looked, which I think is okay. I think it's better than the flat background, but there's still plenty of room for improvement. Now, this is where parallax comes into play. Parallax means that the background is going to appear farther away by moving slower than the foreground. So when I move, the foreground moves fast, but the background is moving at a slightly slower pace, which makes it look farther away. This method is very good because the background has some depth to it. It looks like it's farther away than the foreground, so it feels less flat. And what's nice about Parallax is that it's flexible. You can change how fast the background moves, and that'll change the perception of how far away it is. And the reason why that's useful is that here with this example, there are multiple layers to this background. You can clearly see that there's something close, there's something middle, and then there's something far. Like the clouds are very far away in this shot. So it makes sense for these layers to move at a different pace, which is why implementing a parallax multi-layer setup, which is likely to be the most optimal way to implement a 2D background. And what that means is what you see here. When I move, the closest layer moves faster than the middle layer, which moves faster than the farthest layer. And this creates this illusion of depth where everything is moving at its own pace, meaning that things that are farther away move slower than things that are closer. So it really feels more like a 3D environment, even though it is still a flat 2D plane. And overall, I absolutely love how this background looks. It's, it's just so much more alive than having a flat, static background that doesn't move. Now, I mentioned earlier that implementing parallax is notoriously challenging when you're using just a 2D game engine. But the gist of it is that every layer in the background has its own X and Y position, which is being updated to match where the camera is looking. Then every time that the camera moves, it's going to update its relative X and Y position by some amount relative to how far the camera moved. So if the camera moved, let's say, four pixels in one frame, that would mean that our background probably should only move something like two pixels. And since those values are different, that makes the background move at a different speed than the foreground. Now, instead of going line by line through my code to show you how exactly this parallax works, you can check the description for this file. Uh, it's just a link to my GitHub account for this background.lua file. This is from an open source Love2D game that I posted a few years back. Um, but this file in particular is how I implemented parallax for that game. Now that game was a little bit more simple in that it was just one single parallax layer and it would move both left and right and also up and down. You can move freely throughout the game. Which this bird game is also going to do the same thing but currently I'm focusing on the left and right proportions. So you can check out this file and see how it works. You'll see that we still have the rel x and rel y values and you can check out how they're being updated uh, relative to the old cam x and old cam y values. I do remember that the way this one was set up is that it draws multiple of these tiles all at once and it moves those tiles around the screen to match this parallax background effect. For my current game that I'm working on, I adapted this file to fit more in line with what I'm doing where it's not a tile setup, it's more of a layered background setup where each layer is its own parallax effect. In general, the way that this works is that you have one single background image, or it could be multiple layers, it's, it's all about the same, 
but this one image is going to be bordered by duplicates of that image. There's going to be multiple of the same image on screen at once, and it's going to shift slowly over time. And once it becomes out of bounds, it's going to flip its position back to the other side so that it can keep going on and keep scrolling endlessly without there being any gaps in the image. So in my game, I can keep just flying and flying, and no matter how far I go, even if I keep going beyond the bounds of this level, I know for sure that this background is always going to be intact and it's never going to just like break or there's not going to be any gaps or anything like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to have this implemented into the game. I think that this depth of field background looks way better than having it fixed and just brings so much more life to the game. There are a few more steps I need to do, particularly with vertical movements. So in the, my previous video, I mentioned how there's going to be some vertical levels. Getting this working with that will involve a few more steps, but overall it shouldn't be too bad. And that about covers it. Be sure to check out the GitHub page for that file I was talking about. I think it'll be very useful with understanding how this works. And I really, really appreciate you watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this useful. If so, please like the video. I would love that. And if you enjoyed, I post content similar to this every single week. So be sure to subscribe to see more content from me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.